breakfast I have some yellow dragon fruit and then of course I've got my little ramekin of non-fat Greek yogurt topped with goji berries and cacao nibs mmm there's really no fruit that's like this it's extremely sweet it's very soft and malleable like if you just put pressure around it it just turns into this delicious sweet pulp mmm For lunch, I'm actually trying a brand new recipe. This is an egg cabbage sandwich. I feel like it sounds not very appealing, but when you look at it, you're like, damn, it looks pretty good. I saw a Korean YouTuber make this for lunch and I was very, very intrigued. So let's give it a bite. Mmm. I do not taste the cabbage at all. It just tastes like an egg cheese sandwich. So good. My signature dish, dak bokumtang. This is a spicy braised chicken with potatoes, and I just added some bok choy for some veg. And of course, I've got my mound of brown rice. Ooh, topped with some green onions, of course. All right, let's dig in. I'm freaking hungry. This looks amazing. Mmm. The chicken just falls off the bone. Potatoes are soft. Everything's. Slightly spicy, but definitely manageable. Mmm. Good morning. For breakfast, I'm having a strawberry, blueberry, yogurt parfait. And then with the remaining berries, I just threw them in a bowl. vision for my fish cake soup. I wanted the fish cakes on skewers and make it look all cute, but as you just saw, it was a complete fail. And I just added some kimchi mandu on the side, topped with little bits of sriracha, 
just for some extra food, you know? Mmm. The fish cakes make the broth a little bit sweet, but it's also very savory. It's a really great quick dish. All right, let's try a dumpling. I just steamed them. They're so good. They've got kimchi inside. Delicious. I realized that I made enough food for a small country and I am the only person in this household that can eat this dish. So I don't know how long it's gonna take me to finish these leftovers. I thought I would keep it quite minimal and create a fruit salad. I used the final yellow dragon fruit and then I topped it off with some strawberries and blueberries. Mm. It's so sweet. <laughs> I made both of us a vegetarian bibimbap, and of course, I topped it off with an egg. I used Ben's dish because his egg came out better than mine, so. You gave me the prettier dish? Yeah. Wow. See that? That's love, guys. It this is This looks love. amazing. It looks healthy, delicious, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's been ages since we had a bibimbap, so. Yeah, it's been very long. Oh, mm. so good. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Oh, I've missed this. It's good. It tastes just like the, the restaurant without the sizzling, crackling rice. That's very generous of you to say, thank mm. you. <laughs> mm. Mm. Being brave. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 For dinner, the Tak Pokum Tang saga continues. I try to spice it up by adding some cabbage because I realized that wasn't getting that much love. I also realized that my sesame leaves were starting to get wilty, which is bizarre because it's only been like two days. So I realized like I need to eat it. Mmm. Mm hmm. So this one has a little bit of chicken. I have a Korean omelet known as a keranmari. It's got green onions, zucchini, and carrot, and then two eggs. I also put a squiggle of sriracha because I like things spicy. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. lunch, I made myself some pibimyeon. Now this is supposed to be like a spicy cold noodle, but I didn't make my noodles cold, so they're kind of warm. 
I don't care. I used my new bibimbap sauce and on top I sliced some cucumbers, I fried some kimchi, and then I used the rest of the egg omelet that I made earlier this morning. Oh, I also drizzled some sesame oil and some sesame seeds. I'm just gonna mix this all in now. I'm like terrified of getting my white hoodie red. Mmm. These noodles are slightly spicy, a little sweet, and very nutty because of the sesame oil. Oh, it's such a good lunch food. Mmm. At last, the Tak Pokumdang trilogy comes to an end. This is the final leftovers of it. And I decided to remix it by making a fried rice. I just added some cabbage, some brown rice. I got the chicken and I chopped it into little pieces. I cut the potatoes into smaller bits as well. I'm definitely a volume eater, so I love how the cabbage just stretches out the dish and makes it huge. Mmm. breakfast I used up the last of the strawberries and then I just have my usual non-fat Greek yogurt and I sprinkled some granola and drizzled with honey because these strawberries aren't the sweetest. I just wanted to use up all the final vegetables in my fridge, so I made a veggie chapche. And then for my side dish, I made tubuchim, which is steamed tofu. It's just topped with cucumbers and this soy sauce green onion mixture on top. I wanted to make this for dinner, but I figured I might as well just knock it out right now and then save the other half for dinner. If I really think about it, my lunch is pretty abnormal to traditional Koreans because I'm essentially eating two big side dishes, like two panchans. Like this would not be considered an entree if you went to Korea. Like this would be a side and this would be a side. I'm just lazy and I just made bigger portions and I'm just gonna eat this as an entree. together I have prepared a seaweed soup. This is called myokguk. This is actually my very first time making it and I suspect the second time I make it, it'll be better. I heated up some brown rice. I've got my steamed tofu from lunch, uh, kimchi, and then I've got some kimchi dumplings because, you know, I just wanted to have a lot of side dishes. Mmm! You always have myokguk on your birthday because after the mom gives birth, they'll have milk because it's filled with iron and it's supposed to be good for healing the bod. 